What is going on? Governor Shisco here, and today we're bringing you a KVK playback. That's right, we're traveling on vacation somewhere where we can't upload videos, so we went in in advance and started to edit the dozens and dozens of hours of KVK footage that we had and uploaded it here for you. If you like KVK videos, you should like and subscribe because my goodness, do we have a lot of footage to cover still. And we are a sponsor creator with Rise of Kingdoms. What you're watching is the old strategic captain swap going on. When there's enemies nearby in, in Moss, boom, we swap to that AoE that does serious, serious work in the form of Isong Ye, inflicting deaths upon deaths upon deaths. When that's not happening, boom, we swap back over to our mano a mano rally a fortress <laughs> configuration, the one-on-one -on -one configuration with Richard and Charles, which we think is better for that exact situation. In this particular instance, DFH has already defended successfully many, many times with this fortress. However, we happen to um, log in and see that this was getting hit. We're on our mobile device right now, our cell phone, which is why the proportions aren't quite right for this video. Um, and the defense is not going particularly well. What we did when we were going offline is we would join DFH, drop our captains into this fortress so that they could use them to at least defend themselves more effectively. We were a T5 player. Most of their players were not. I want to call attention to the many uh, noble players that put a ton of troops into this fort trying to defend it. Um, the thing that went really sideways with this particular defense that you're watching here, unlike other defenses that they did very successfully, is that they're not able to maintain 2 million troops in the flag or the fort at all times. And so uh, OV is getting some value here by virtue of uh, our not having the full number of troops into the structure. So they're getting some amount of value. Um, however, there it is. Uh, defense has concluded. Let's get a look at the report. This probably goes very well for them. Uh, 1.4 million dead for... Uh, DFH and 900,000 dead for OV, but we did get some incidental AOE value. Let's see what that looks like. Let's see how much AOE value we've obtained here. Some of these armies, they have zero dead, um, and that is because, oh, there's 12,000 dead. When they have zero dead, uh, that's because they got hit by Richard's AOE, which doesn't actually do any damage, so it's registering that they were a part of the report, but nothing happened to them. There's another 10,000 that we killed, and cruising along, here's another 1,000 or so that we killed, cruising along, another 5,600. So it's probably more like a million dead in total for their side once we get to the bottom of this report, which honestly is not such a bad ratio. Um, it would have been just totally one-sided, however. Ugh, we got jumped to the top of the report because we had a gatherer come back. That's awkward. Now, how did we have a gatherer come back? We must have been scouted. I don't know how that would have worked that way. Anyways, we're going to make our way to the bottom of this report again. Something I learned the hard way is you really should favorite the report and then start to look at it because otherwise new events bump it around. There's another 8,000 dead. There's another 3,000 dead. There's another 10,000 dead. We got some sweet value with the AOE. Um, not enough to offset the cost of this rally. And I'm pretty sure at this point DFH decides, I think we've had enough defending this particular fort. Now we're back to 2x speed in the open field by the bridge. Did I mention bridges in this channel once, twice, five times, a dozen times? Bridges are strategic choke, choke points. You really do want to own them. Oh my. Here we've got some crazy amount of open field combat around the bridge. Looks like Shifty's marched his armies right into the center of where all of our armies are. Hopefully we get a look up at that combat. Oh, but I see why we haven't moved. There's more going on down here. Oh man, talk about getting caught out of position. Poor Jup Jup. Totally out of position there. That army's not getting away. Yikes. Yikes. 
uh, there were no small number of open field combat sessions like this one that you're seeing here, uh, which were pretty darn crazy. We can see a number of people actually employing the murder ball strategy we've talked about on several occasions. Grim Pikachu is doing that right now. Let's jump ahead a little bit to some excitement. We've got a flag that we're rallying here. I actually don't think this is a very good idea to be rallying this flag. Jup Jup is leading, and it looks like he's leading with Caesar. So not only are we using commanders that probably aren't the very best choice um however they've got way too many troops in that vicinity given that they can infinitely reinforce the flag we actually end up having to hit uh the reduced graphics setting here because there's so many darn armies on the field way too many armies on the field um yeah so I think a better pairing to have been doing that rally with would have been Isong Ye with El Cid um I don't even know who the secondary was to Caesar but he's just not my first pick for leading a rally against a structure. Not my first pick for that activity. Now, we've got a flag here with a bunch of troops defending it. We make Jup Jup the captain, and it does look like we've got his El Cid Isong Ye. And look at this! What have we found here? Is this a rally on a fort that the enemy is doing? Yeah, time to swarm the rally. Lol. <laughs> uh, we should have started swarming that way sooner. They can't... Uh, use skill attacks on us, and we're getting skill attacks on them. Yeah, that seems good. That seems pretty darn good. And now we pick off the remaining armies. Nice, nice. We've actually switched locations for this particular clip. Um, this is a part where we were trying to battle our way out of our passes. Um, there's a cheese defense tactic that works that you should use, where you basically build flags next to the passes, then put cities there to physically block the space, bubble the city, and then delete the flags, and there's no way for us to battle our way out. So here we were attempting to battle our way out anyways, which is pretty impressive that we were able to um, even pull off this sort of an offensive at all. Um, and I don't think it's ultimately going to work out, but you really can't accuse Kingdom 51 of not having a whole heck of a lot of fighters. Uh, even though KVK basically had already ended for us, we were still doing a not small amount of battling. Now, here we're using a murder ball. That's right, we've got, looks like, count them, five armies on the open field, picking targets, um, hopefully selectively, hopefully, hopefully opportunistically here. I don't remember exactly what took place in this particular clip. Um, but we are focusing down armies and using our overwhelming numbers to do some serious work on the enemy. And it looks like some of our friends from Riot are here. Hopefully we noticed and switched targets. We did. Um, those folks that are in Riot that are helping us out really should have just joined Legion for this particular combat, in part because um, it's freaking chaotic. It's hard to hit the right army, right? So we appreciate... like. We should be working together in this way, but it's like very hard to hit the right thing. And we had room in Legion. We could have just used it. Um, it's so much easier to, to do it that way. In fact, I really feel like... I really feel like the one of the strongest plays for KVK is just to have one or two alliances that are active 24-7 and you just swap out the people who aren't online and swap in people who are active fighters. I think that's the best play, honestly, for how to handle KVK. My two cents, but whatever. So here we're doing some battling. We see Slouty on the field. So we send our armies to go hit him. Our armies are getting about half health here, some of them anyways. So it's about time for us to make a strategic retreat to refill some of those armies simply because we can. Simply because we can, but we're not done yet. We've got more we want to do with our murder ball here going in and picking folks off. And look at this. When we target them, they're forced to go somewhere else. I mean, the sheer number of armies we were bringing is enough to really intimidate and bully uh, opponents. And man, I know I've mentioned this several times, but the murder ball strategy is a gosh darn good one. I can't even tell who we're hitting right now. It looks like they retreated, and so our armies are redirecting themselves. Um, here we've cut a little bit forward in the footage where we've sent four of our armies back to refill and we've got our infantry on the front line. We're probably doing some 
non-trivial amount of troop healing right now as well, because as you can imagine, when you bring five, count them, five freaking armies to the battlefield, yeah, you're going to have a lot of healing to do afterwards. Make sure your hospital can handle that. And don't fool around with that, by the way. All it would take is for you to get disconnected with your armies in a bad position, and then your hospital will overflow if you already had a lot of troops in there. So we're now running around with infantry, doing some work on the folks that are in the field, uh, because infantry are awfully sustainable if you're bringing Richard I and Charles Martel to the party, which of course we were. We've got a rally in, which I think is an interesting choice, Jup Jup leading here, likely with that Isonye El Cid glory, and no, it's infantry. Well, that is fascinating. It's an infantry rally to counter the... Cavalry commanders. That is interesting. I don't know that. I don't know that that's what I would be doing. Um, I I much prefer high DPS armies. Oh no! And look what they've done here. They just switched to El Cid and Isong Ye, and they're getting tons of free value. Hope folks are paying attention. We drop a marker here to get out of the AOE, but that's going to be way too little, way too late. They're getting some strong value here, and even we get hit once. Ugh, what a waste. 1,300 dead troops just for sitting in the field. But, in fairness, I don't know. The number of troops we killed that way is so high. Like, yeah, let them kill the 1,000 of mine. The millions of theirs that we killed using our commanders probably offsets that. Probably offsets that. So, this is a rally I think we need to cancel. I'm probably going to make the call pretty soon. I'm frantically pointing out that you should get out of the AOE, and it looks like that's the end of that particular clip. My friends, I hope you have enjoyed this particular installment of our KVK footage. We've got more to come. Like and subscribe if you're enjoying this stuff, and until next time, you have fun smashing the kingdom.